Assalamu alaikum everybody. How are you all? All right. So today we will cover up pharmacology of respiratory system. Uh, right now we are going to talk about drugs, used to treat rhinitis and cough. All right. What is rhinitis? What is rhinitis? Anybody tell me about it in the chat box because I told you last time and uh, a couple of days back I even conducted a class on uh, explaining, yeah, runny nose, okay. Inflammation of nose? Inflammation of nose, like nose gets bigger, as it, along with fever? Mm -hmm. Irritation and inflammation of mucous membrane. All right. What are the conditions? Why exactly one can have a runny nose? Why? Why can one have a stuffy nose? Why? Because of allergies, very nice. Okay. All right. Okay, because of thickening of mucosa, allergy, viruses. Yeah, right. Very good. Okay. So, we will talk about rhinitis, okay? And we'll talk about cough. All right. So, first of all, let's discuss about rhinitis. All right. Okay. I have two more messages. Uh, okay, infectious diseases and all. Okay, fine. Can it happen because of pollens? Yes, it can happen because of pollens as well. It can also happen because of the hormonal disturbance. Um, it can also happen during pregnancy. We also talked in our uh, class, I think, second last class, we talked that elderly parents elderly people can develop rhinitis also okay uh, like they can develop it more frequently so the classes of drugs that can help to treat rhinitis are antihistamines alpha adrenoreceptor agonists and then we have inhaled corticosteroids okay all right so characteristics of rhinitis like we all have discussed right now the congestion is caused by increased mucus production vasodilation and fluid accumulation in mucosal spaces all right so mucus production vasodilation and parasympathetic stimulation and airway widening are produced by inflammatory mediators that is histamine leukotrienes prostaglandins and kinins so let's talk about antihistamines first of all so antihistamines are histamine receptor antagonists they include first generation diphenhydramine, uh, bromphenyramine, chlorphenyramine, and second generation loratadine, which are useful in allergic rhinitis but have little effect on rhinitis associated with colds. Okay, so antihistamines reduce the parasympathetic tone of arterioles and decrease secretion through their anticholinergic activity. Anticholinergics might be more effective in rhinitis, but the doses required produce systemic adverse effects. Iprotropium bromide, a poorly absorbed acetylcholine antagonist administered by laser spray is a proof for rhinorrhea associated with the 
common cold or with allergic or non-allergic rhinitis. Then we have alpha adrenal receptor agonists. So these act as nas nasal decongestants. So these agents include epinephrine and oxymetazoline, which are administered as nasal aerosol, pseudoephedrine, which is administered orally, and phenylephrine, which may be administered orally or as nasal aerosol. Administration as an aerosol is characterized by rapid onset, few systemic effects, and an increased tendency to produce rebound nasal congestion. So oral administration results in longer duration of action, increased systemic effects, and less potential for rebound congestion and dependence. All right. So these agents reduce airway resistance by constricting dilated arterioles in the nasal mucosa. Alpha adrenoreceptor agonists produce adverse effects that include nervousness, tremor, insomnia, dizziness, and phrenitis uh, medicamentosa. So this is chronic mucosal inflammation due to prolonged use of topical vasoconstrictors characterized by rebound congestion, tachyphylaxis, dependence, and eventual mucosal necrosis. All right. Then we talk about uh, inhaled corticosteroids. So topical corticosteroids include bacomethasone and flinicolide. Uh, Topical corticosteroids are administered as nasal sprays to reduce systemic absorption and adverse effects. These agents require one to two weeks for full effect. All right, then let's talk about cough. Before we start talking about cough, I want you all to learn some basic terminologies, okay? And then we'll talk about where exactly these medications are required, okay? All right. So, the first one being anti -tussive. So, these are used to prevent or relieve a cough, okay? Then we have expector, uh, expectorants. So, they promote the secretion of sputum by the air passage, used especially to treat cough. Then we have mucolytic agents, okay? Act to break down thick mucus. Now the thing is, we have two kinds of cough. One is productive cough and other one is non-productive cough. The terminologies are here on the slide in front of you. I want you all to think that in the productive cough and in the non-productive cough, okay, which of the medications are required, all right? So, productive is the cough in which sputum is produced and non-productive is a dry cough. I want you all to tell me in the chat box that in the wet productive cough, which medication will you give? I'm repeating my question again. In the wet productive cough, I want you all to think that which medication would you give? These are the classes of drugs and I want you to predict that in the wet productive cough, okay. Rabia, I want you to explain why are you giving ACA inhibitor here? Because you see on the slide, there are three classes of drugs, okay? One is anti swift then we have expector, expectorants, okay? And then we have mucolytic agents, okay? And I want you to pick from these three, okay? 
mucolytic expectorant all right okay okay uh, all right okay so majority of you i don't know why picked only one that was either you said expectorant or you said mucolytic however we can actually use both depending on the situation okay so when we are talking about the productive cough okay so we can give expectorant and mucolytic agents and when we talk about non-productive cough okay which is a dry cough we can give anti tusive agents okay so cold preparation may contain a mixture of both for the treatment all right uh, even uh, some medication um there are is still in my cabinet okay which are there for both kind of cups all right the like within one formulation both of the kind of uh, you know chemicals are there all right all right so characteristic of cough cough is produced by cough reflex which is integrated in the cough center in the medulla if you remember in the last class i said to you that whenever you hear the word medulla think as if you are wearing the medal okay and then the areas of your body which a medal can cover up they are the areas which actually medulla will be uh, controlling all right so when i wear a medal of course the lungs would be covered up okay and that is why we say that the cough is controlled by medulla in the brain all right and within the medulla there is cough reflex all right if you remember we talked about vagus nerve right and the vagus nerve is actually associated with it okay so the initial stimulus for cough probably arises in the bronchial mucosa where irritation results in bronchial constriction all right so uh, cough receptors are specialized stretch receptors in the trachea and bronchial tree send vagal efferent vagal efferent refers to the vagus nerves okay to the cough center and trigger the cough reflex all right oh i got a message okay no problem all right so beta first of all we'll talk about the antitussive agents okay and here when we look here okay so they contain the first category which we are going to discuss is opioids now the thing is opioids is addictive okay so we need to be very careful where that what kind of a dosage are we taking all right all right so uh codeine hydro co uh, codone and hydromorphone decrease sensitivity of the central cuff center to peripheral stimuli and decrease mucus secretion antitussive actions occur at doses lower than those required for analgesia all right so these agents produce constipation nausea and respiratory depression then the next class we have uh, the next compound we have is dextro metho uh, methorphan and if you would check in your cabinets i'm sure you would see a medicine of this kind okay and uh, i tell you what uh, it's a very funny story uh, when i started to study pharmacology when i was a child okay so at that moment what happened one of the days my sister had a cough and she had a dry cough all right so when i came home she could barely talk and uh, during those days i was luckily studying this chapter and she she actually self medicated herself okay so instead of taking she already had a dry cough okay she took a medicine which would treat the productive cough all right and since she took a medicine that would make her conditions go even more dry okay she could barely talk and then uh, i specifically took out this name and then i found in the 
uh, drug guide that which uh, brand names are available in the market and then i bought the medicine for her so this is the chemical i picked up for my sister so let's read about it so this is the extra methorphan is a uh, isomer of an opioid it is active as an antitusive a but has less analgesic activity or addictive liability than codeine uh, it is less constipating than the codeine so wow i picked up the best one okay uh, then we have benzo uh, benzotate so it is a, gly a glycerol derivative chemically similar to procaine and other ester type anesthetics it reduces the activity of peripheral cough receptor and also appears to reduce the threshold of the central cough center okay then we have expectorant Haji. so expectorant stimulate production of watery less viscous mucus they include guaifenesin so it acts directly via the gi tract to stimulate the vagal reflex near emetic doses of uh, guaifenesin are required for benefit uh, beneficial effect so these doses are not attained in typical odc preparation mucolytic agent that is n acetyl cysteine so it reduces the viscosity as it as the name suggests mucolytic breaks down the mucus right so it reduces the viscosity of mucus and sputum by cleaving the disulfide bonds so it is delivered as an inhalant and modestly reduces copd access turbation rates by roughly 30 percent intravenous and acetylcysteine is used as an antidote for acetaminophen toxicity okay uh, then we have inhaled corticosteroids so topical corticosteroids include uh, baclomethasone and flunisolide so topical corticosteroids are administered as nasal sprays to reduce systemic absorption and adverse effects so these agents require one to two weeks for full effect that is it everybody wait 